What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of La Liga Career Mode, this is episode number 24 and we're starting today's episode off on the back of the deadline day signings, we bought in a new midfield, we bought in a new winger and we also sold our Serbian holding mid Petrovic to Borussia Mönchengladbach as well and we begin February right now occupying 7th place, we are 4 points clear of Granada in 8th and 9 clear of Sevilla in 9th as well but at the moment Whilst we are only three points off Bilbao in sixth and only four points off fifth, fourth and third, I'm not really thinking about what's above us in the table right now. I'm thinking about what's below us. And you might sit there and say, Doxy boy, that's weak mentality, man. You've got to shoot for the stars. But I'm just being realistic, you know. We've been on a decent run. We haven't lost a game in La Liga since the middle of December. We had an unbeaten run of January in La Liga. Of course, got, uh, got beat by Villarreal in the cup, of course. I, I think at the moment, you know, a, a loss is right around the corner. And as you know, in FIFA career mode, once you've had one loss, you can't afford two on the bounce because form is so OP. So I, I know that Levante right behind us right now, Sevilla, I think are also going to have a good second half of the season too. I just need to keep them at bay. I've just got to make sure the very lowest we finish is seventh. And so long as the Copa del Rey winners are in the top six or above, seventh will give us Europa Conference League football. And I'll take that. I will take that. I know previously I said the Europa Conference League was a Mickey Mouse competition. I've changed my mind because I want to qualify for it. So, <laughs> you know, so like I, I am okay with seventh right now. And that's why, again, it would, it would be nice to finish in sixth or fifth, get Europa League. It would be nice to sneak into the top four. But I'm not going to be overly ambitious. I will take 7th every day of the week. And the board would as well. So, first game of today's episode. And after they just beat us in the Copa del Rey last 32. It's a meme that every time we face this team. It's a guaranteed 3 points for Unai Emery. But I thought, not this time. I'm not going to take it anymore. They just beat us in the Copa del Rey. But now it's La Liga. And we need to get a result against them. I would take a point, no doubt about it. But in the second half, after a really tedious and tepid first 45 minutes, what a start. Ruben Rashina opens the scoring. Jan Brysatecki doubles it. And I, I don't know what happened, but as soon as we're getting towards the hour mark, I just flipped the switch. I mean, I literally just went out of Villarreal. I kept on getting the chances down the left-hand side. Antonio set up the first, and he set up the third as well. Whips the ball to the back stick. Picks out Azuni, who has been so good since the Darwin injury. And our Albanian winger makes it Granada free. Villarreal nil. And I just looked at Unai Emery, gave him a little wink and said, not tonight. Yep, freeing it up against Villarreal. And in 86 minute here, Villarreal looking for a consolation, throwing bodies on the line, desperately trying to cling onto a clean sheet. And we do so as well. Maximiano, fantastic stop at the near post. And you see the relief and see what it means. Villarreal have been beaten. Yeah, we scored three goals in 14 minutes to win the game. It was such a, such a strange game because, you know, like I always say, I present the highlights package fairly. What happens is what you'll see. I don't sweep anything under the rug. Literally nothing went on in the first hour. Like literally nothing. And then bang, out of nowhere. I just, I can't explain it, but I just flipped the switch, scored those three goals. And there you go. 15 games to go. We're still four clear of Levante and heading into this game here, traveling to the Basque region at a fabulous stadium of Athletic Bilbao. Well, win this game and we would definitely leapfrog them and go into a Europa League spot. And if results went our way, Granada could be back in the top four. Yep, so heading into the game, I decided to be brave. We just beat Villarreal, massive psychological hurdle overcome there. And heading into this game, I was thinking, what a chance to get into the top four. We can't afford to let those teams get away from us if we are to be a Champions League team next season. So can't afford a loss in this game. Well, we drew against them in the first fixture at home. We know it goes head-to-head -head record for goal difference in La Liga. So can't afford to lose this one because they'll guarantee to finish above us if we're level on points. They did take the lead in the second half. They have been the better team, but 63 minutes in. He's too good, man. He is too good. Luis Javier Suarez, only behind Ansu Fati in the race for the golden boot. Turns his man inside out with the Berber spin. And then in stoppage time, in a game where I hadn't played especially well, one late chance to win it. Centelles to Antonio. VR skips round one, skips round two. Antonio to Rashida somehow misses the target. Oh my goodness. I mean, it was on his weaker right foot. 
and the vet this season has been consistently brilliant. But I should have won the game. It was such a tight game. Very, very few chances getting created. But how I missed the target from there. I mean, seriously. And, you know, look, weaker right foot. Okay, you know, I always say if a player shoots on a weaker foot, you can't be too critical. But from that range, you kind of can. How did I not at least hit the target there, man? Seriously. I mean, I think it was one of those ways where adrenaline just took over. Basically, final kick of the game. Chance to win it. Massive, massive moment. And I don't know how I failed to target. Just, just get it on target, man. Like, even if it's a team effort, test the goalkeeper. From that close proximity, it's unlikely you'll hold on to the ball. So if nothing else, you'll get a rebound. I think those are the moments right there where, like, you know, I've talked about it before. I am such a nervous Nelly. I mean, seriously, I really am so bad at keeping my composure. And, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those moments where it's not about the technical, it's about the mental, you know. And I know I sound like a broken record when I talk about this sort of stuff but sometimes those are the fine margins that separate winning and losing or in that case winning and drawing you know can you keep your composure because oftentimes technical levels physical levels they might be very similar but who's got the mental edge who's got the you know the composure and the concentration and the calmness you know to capitalize on moments like that sometimes it's what it comes down to you know and I often talk about it you know Sergio Aguero that everyone remembers is you know game winner against QPR it was a title winner in stoppage time you know, a, a, a weak mental mind would not have been able to have that composure to score that goal. I think, now I might be wrong, I think the defender was Neda Manuha, but when Balotelli slid the ball forward there, Aguero didn't just smash it first time. He took an extra touch, take it around the last defender, and then smack it in near post past Paddy Kenny. Those moments right there, you know, like the title is on the line. You know, I mean, it really does come down to who's got the mental edge there. And Aguero is a finisher, Man City's top scorer. I mean, you know, no one will ever deny his quality in front of goal, of course. But sometimes it's the mental aspect that proves to be the difference between, again, winning and losing, or in that case there, winning and drawing. Massive moment bottled by Rashina. How does he respond? Well, that's mental resilience right there. Following game, Real Valladolid scored in the first half a goal, which was, I'll be honest, some of you will be saying, Docs, how did you do that skill move, mate? Um, it wasn't a skill move. <laughs> I tried to do a flare through ball and he miskicked it. So he just ran onto it himself and smacked it in. It wasn't a skill move. It was an L2 and triangle through ball that didn't come off. But hey, I guess, guess it kind of did because he scored a goal in the first half, scored in the second, and then later on in the game here against Valladolid. It was party time. Alberto Soro comes off the bench and scores a Rabona goal. Yes, a Rabona goal. You'd love to see them. It was, to be fair, an open goal. But even so, it still counts. It's 5 1 Granada and whilst Valladolid will grab another contest. Consolation goal late on. I did not care one bit. Back on track. Back to winning ways. 5-2 after Vaidalida. And we look at the stats as well. It was actually quite an even game. Vaidalid had one more shot than us. We had a higher XG. But even so, it was great to see Rashina bounce back with two goals in that game. And after a hat-trick of assists for Antonio as well. Well, I know some of you guys will be wondering what's happening here. As you can see... He's two away from equaling the record of Lionel Messi. Yeah, back in, uh, I think it was the 2019-2020 season, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong, Barcelona and La Liga fans, but I think that's right. He set the assist record in a season with 21. Well, Antonio has got a whole host of games remaining, and he's got 19. Yep, he is on the edge of equaling it, and he's two to equal it, and three to set a new record. I said at the start of the season, I think he can do it this year, and it seems likely he's got the possibility. Surely he's odds on to do it right now. So following game, third of five, uh, sorry, fourth of five, Cadiz here away from home. And when you talk about creativity, hat-trick of assists in the last game. Can I just say this right now? He's had some great assists this year. This to me is the best. Look at this for a free ball. Oh, he's, per he's absolutely perfect. I mean, seriously, this kid, I mean, uh, you know, I've had some amazing creative players over the years. He's one of the all-time greats, and I've only had one and a half years with him. That, that, oh, I can't, I, I watched a replay of that, and then, I know it's a bit nerdy, but I got an instant replay and slowed it down from different angles. That was incredible. Perfectly timed, perfectly weighted, weaker left foot from a tired angle. Unbelievable, but... What wasn't unbelievable was this. 27 minutes in, Alvaro Negredo, the vet. How old is this guy now? <laughs> Makes it 1-1. Cadiz get back on level terms. And, oh, 
Maximiano, Luis, he's really eliminated errors from his game since the start of last season when he made so many, but I guess he just loses track of the ball in flight, he goes so high up in the air, he seems to lose his vision and his balance, goes to claim it, Negredo says, nope, I'm going to take that first, heads it in, it's not a foul on the goalkeeper, it's just poor goalkeeping, Cadiz back on level terms, Negredo with the level, and then four minutes after the restart, trying to get back in front, oh mate, how did Suarez miss that? And again, how did I miss that? Six yards from goal, our top scorer this year, scored in the first half. I should have won it there. We had three golden chances, shot blocked, shot saved. And then, oh, mate, honestly, like, I can't believe that. Like, the ball dropped out of the sky to our top scorer and the second highest scorer in the league. And he blazed it wide from six yards. Big slip up, draw against Cadiz, two draws in three. But one point behind Batiste right now in fifth. One point behind sixth as well. And you would have seen it too. Levante have been stuttering a little bit in recent weeks. We've now got a nine-point gap on eighth place Levante. So, right now, we are definitely destiny in our own hands to finish in seventh place. Now, as you know... Every single season of FIFA career mode, you go on a poor run of form. We've already had one poor run of form. And David Vera, by the way, how good does this look? Guy look at 15 years old. Um, there's no doubt about it. I do sense a poor run of form right around the corner. Normally, there's a, there's a run around mid-season to the second third of the season when you go on a poor run. Now, March, you're out some favorable fixtures. Ibar, newly promoted, Mallorca as well. But a tough one to start off with against Sociedad here. The most important thing for me is just making sure we can avoid defeats. Because we've got a nine-point gap on, uh, on Granada. Uh, nine-point... I keep saying Granada. Nine-point gap on Levante in eighth place right now. Points at this point aren't too bad, especially against the bigger teams. I just can't afford losses and allow Levante to close the gap game by game. So our final game today, Real Sociedad, on the back of the draw against Cadiz and a slip-up away from home. Back in Andalusia, I thought, OK... All right, let's get back to winning ways. And what a start as well. He's going for the assist title. He's one away from leveling the record with Messi. But let's not forget this guy's added goals to his game this year as well. Ninth in 25, averaging over one in every three. Antonio, 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 Antonio. Opens the score in, makes it 1-0. And then 18 minutes in. Sociedad right now, aiming for a Champions League place. Well, like I said, what are we made of? Two draws in our last three games. Nine point gap on Levante, but need to keep the unbeaten run going. Haven't lost in La Liga since December. It's now the start of March. Can we keep it going? Well, what a start. Luis Mia makes it 2 0, but uh, uh, Sociedad would get back in the game 21 minutes in. Absolute thunderbolt here into the top corner as Sociedad half deficit. And I was thinking, that's okay. I don't mind. And I'll tell you why. Because I can't defend. Every Everyone knows that, but I can score. We've already scored two early goals in the first half. No reason we can't get a third. Ten minutes before the break, we have it. Brilliant dribbling from Azuni down the right-hand side. What a replacement he's been for Darwin. Darwin went down, and I was fearing the worst. But Azuni's done everything I could have asked of him and more. He's got over ten assists this season. There's another one. Rolls it across to Luis Mia. Brace for our number five. Two goal cushion restored. Granada three. Real Sociedad one. And then 40. 36 minutes in, sometimes you just need a bit of luck, and we got it right there. Anan Yanazai back post, heads it off the crossbar, and then we clear it off the line. Still leading by two at the break. Sociedad with 18 minutes to go, would have a good chance to get back in the game, though. Azuni goes down after a rough challenge. It's a fair one. Referee doesn't stop play. Play on. Sociedad well in their right to keep on attacking. Ismail Asar off the bench trying to turn Carlos Neva. Our left back says no. Gets away from him, rolls it to Azuni. Back to his feet, stops the ball, sends it long. Neva versus Elistondo. The race is on. Carlos wins it. He's running through one-on-one. -on -one. And instead, rolls it across to Luis Javier Suarez to make it four. You know those underrated players in your team that never get the credit? Carlos Neva just showed right there. It's important in one highlight. 
the tackle on one end, the run on the other, and then the assist for Suarez to wrap it up. He is so good, man. I mean, he really is better than I give him credit for. 4-1 Granada, massive, massive victory. We beat Sociedad with a huge victory and keep the pressure on the top four and keep Levante and Sevilla at bay. We're coming into the business end of the season. As you can see, the league table, just 11 games to go. But Granada has snuck into sixth. We're still nine clear of Levante. We've now gone ahead of Bilbao by one. We're only one behind Batiste. And now Sociedad in fourth and two behind Barca in third. 11 games to go. European football is looking very likely now. Question is, can we deliver the big time and get into the Champions League or even the Europa League as well? But that would be today's episode of La Liga Carima, guys. Big fan of you for watching. you enjoyed it. If you haven't, please drop a like. Most love to you all. Have a fantastic day. And I'll see you for the next episode of La Liga Carima. This game tense now. Very soon.